No, thank you. I really appreciate it. You know, I'm honored and humbled to be here with you guys. You know, excellencies, ladies and uh, gentlemen, 72 years ago, a promise, a promise was made to us. This promise started with we the peoples of the United Nations. Here I am in front of you, humbled to speak in the names of those that are speechless and censored. Because being silent when you can speak up is a crime. I could just enumerate the names of dictators all over the world that are oppressing their very own people. The same ones that are also abusing those international forum and platforms to pretend they are so benevolent and respectful to their human rights obligations. You know, yet a three minute speech will sadly not be enough time. That is why I prefer to focus on the peoples, on the victims, because they are like you and I, the peoples of the United Nations. They are threatening us. They are trying to break us. They are trying to defeat us. And most of all, they are trying to break our unity and solidarity. In other words, they want to divide us. This is why I speak up today. And I look at them in the eye and I say, try and try again, here we are. Cuban, American, Saudis, Tibetan, Iranians, Ukrainian, Russian, Venezuelan, Chinese, North Korean, Zimbabwean, Uyghur, Belarusian, Vietnamese, Nicaraguan, Afghan, Turkish, as well as Gulen movement and Kurdish people, Muslims, Shias, Sunnis, Jewish, Christian, atheists, women, and men, younger and older. We gather and we speak up all together, united, one and unique voice, and we say no to arbitrary detention, no to enforced dis disappearances, no to torture, no to censorship, no to corruption. And we say yes to freedom of speech, to democracy, and to rule of law. And we won't be silent until our people will be free from oppression and violence. Today, I stand in this room in the United Nations. I am no United Nations expert. I am no lawyer, no diplomat, nor politician. I'm an athlete, but I firmly intend to remind to all United Nations members to promise to their people to prevent wars, to promote and protect freedoms and human rights. And I also remember this friend who was explaining to me that the purpose of the United Nations, she quoted the second Secretary General of the United Nations, Dyke, who said the United Nations was not created in order to bring us to heaven, but in order to save us from hell. These words remain as valid today as they were 60, 60 years ago. Yet I would like to make these words mine and say that if the United Nations cannot bring heaven to the people, let's work together to ensure to make lives of those oppressors and dictators hell and to bring them in front of courts. Thank you.